Hello, it's Dr. Lou. In case you have not watched the prior videos, I am the lead faculty member who has created the online laboratory classes using kids from Science Interactive. In today's video, I'm going to go over the first part of the chemical reactions lab, which deals with single displacement reactions and the reactivity of metals. This experiment deals with chemical reactions. The first experiment is going to deal with single displacement reactions and the reactivity of metals. The second, reaction, the second experiment will deal with a lot of other kinds of chemical reactions, such as double displacement and precipitation reactions. On the screen, I have the general form of a single displacement reaction. Usually we have a solid metal reacting with some salt solution and we're going to get a, another metal forming. So notice A was a solid. Now the B comes out of solution and becomes a solid and then we have a different salt solution. So in the experiment we are dealing with today a is going to be equal to uh, aluminum. Our B, C is going to equal a potentially variety of chemicals, either silver nitrate, copper 2 sulfate, Whoops. Calcium chloride. CaCl2. Or lead to nitrate. So what is going to happen is the more reactive metal ends up in solution. So looking at our Reaction at the top, the more reactive metal is going to be there. So whatever ends up into this salt solution, that is the more reactive metal. So if no reaction, then we know what? We know that A less reactive than B. So sometimes it's counterintuitive if we add a salt solution and we see a reaction, that means A is going to be more reactive. If we do not see a reaction, then B is going to be the more reactive species. When completing these experiments and writing everything down, make sure you use qualitative data to support answers. So do not just state A less reactive than B. State A less reactive than B 
because we do not see a chemical reaction when we add the solution to the top of the aluminum foil. Let me finish by showing you briefly how to carry out the experiment. We're going to look at the procedure. So I have a picture. So in this picture, I have some aluminum foil. The aluminum foil looks a little oxidized. It looks a little dirty. So I'm going to take some salt and vinegar and clean the aluminum foil. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an ACL. NaCl is going to be a solid, and let me move this down just a little bit. So NaCl is going to be a solid. We're going to react it with acetic acid. That is the main component of vinegar, which is aqueous. And what are we going to end up with? We are going to end up with HCl aqueous plus sodium acetate. Left out a C, COOH. And that is going to be aqueous. So it is this HCl that is the chemical that is going to react with the oxidized material on the surface. So I can box this in. So it is this HCl. So a very weak amount of HCl will clean off the surface. So you can see I have cleaned off the surface of the aluminum foil and have labeled it so it is ready to go. If you buy or use aluminum foil purchased from the supermarket, it may also have a coating on there to keep it from oxidizing and to look shiny. We would want to strip that off as well. Okay. So next, the chemicals for the lab may come in one of two ways. We could have pipettes with the chemicals. If the chemicals are in pipettes, you can store the pipettes in an empty well plate vertically and cut the tops off so they are ready to go. When the pandemic started, there was a huge demand for these online lab kits. We had to get a, another supplier for the chemicals. The secondary supplier provides the chemicals in vials with disposable pipettes. So either way, you are still going to be dispensing the chemicals from a pipette. It will either be oh, directly out of a pipette that was pre-filled with the chemicals or from a vial with a disposable pipette.